play, but I was like, I respect your decision. So once again, um, we were we were looking for a fourth, and we were talking to Smexon, and he was really close to being on our team. We were talking to Thugonomics, their team broke up. We were talking to a couple other people, and uh, you know, Sam messaged me, and he's like, yo, did you get a fourth yet? And I was like, no. And he was like, I won in. And I was like, what? He's like, I won in. He's like, I, I changed my mind. I won in if it's not too late. And um, I got him in a call, and I was like, what changed your mind? And he was like, he's like, I just don't want to not play. And I was like, why? You know, like, what, what, what changed your mind? He's like, well, honestly, he's like, he's like, I feel like I'm not going to be a good fit for your team. He's like, I play Rogue Mage, and I just don't think that's going to offer too much to your team. And I was like, well, quite frankly, um, quite frankly, I was like, I don't think you're going to offer too much to our team for this second cup. I was like, you know, we kind of cover a lot of the comps. I was like, I think you're going to have a really, really small role in this expansion. And I said, next year, or next expansion, I think you're going to be insane for us. I think it's going to be really important. And um, I think there was a little bit of... Sam was understanding, but I think there was a little Congrats, bit of disappointment. Man. I didn't put a hole in um, my ceiling from jumping too high or anything. I think there was a little bit of disappointment. Uh, I think I will mute the text to speech. Is there a way I can do that? Hold on a second. I don't know if I can mute it. If I mute this, will you guys not hear anything? Mic check, mic check. Can you guys still hear me? I think this mutes the text to speech. But you guys can still hear me? Mic's not muted? Okay, this mutes the text to speech. Thank you guys so much for the support. Like I said, if you guys are going to keep subbing and stuff, I, you know, I'm probably not going to be able to read them. All right, so um, Sam said, you know, he wasn't really sure if he was a good fit. And um, basically, I told him, like, straight up, like, you got to understand your role in this team right now. It's going to be very small. And like I said, it was a very small role. But there was a really important time where he came out game five as Thunder Cleave and he took us a win. Um, wait, you guys, you guys trolling? You can hear me? One's in the chat if you can hear me. Um, and there was another really, really important game where he came out as Windwalker Mage and qualified us for that second LAN. And then, uh, ironically, it turns out I couldn't make it to the second LAN. So, at that point... Um, at that point... Sam started playing healer once he knew I couldn't make it to the second land. So, um, his role went from being kind of, a you know, backup DPS to a full-time healer. And I'm sure that was pretty stressful for him. So he went to that land as a rank one shaman. They, they got like 3,100 rated. He was incredibly high rated. He got rank one and, um, they got last place again. So our first two land performances were eighth place, eighth place double eighth place okay it's been a tough year but once again you know shake it off we want to be able to lose the best we, we don't care about that so now uh now bfa comes out and wind walkers are terrible death knights are terrible and we're not really sure what's going to happen you know it's it was a little disappointing if we lost blizzcon you know i, I wasn't going to make excuses but i was going to be like man it would have been really nice if our main comp worked but either way uh, Trill, the PvE lord that he is, he uh, he knew demon hunters were going to be good. And he made a demon hunter, and Sam leveled a bunch of different classes, and uh, Sam ended up, you know, maining Boomkin, and Mez leveled a hunter, he leveled a ret, he leveled a warrior, and he leveled a death knight, and maybe even some other stuff, and, uh, you know, the, the, the role between Sam and Mez changed. And I think Mez started feeling a little bit because, you know, he kept saying, like, sorry, I'm not helping you guys very much. But he had um, he had an important role, too. You know, we won the first cup. Um, we beat RPS. We beat a bunch of other stuff. Tank trinkets were broken at that time. And we knew without tank trinkets it was going to be a lot more difficult. So we went into the second tournament with no tank trinkets. And our DH Boomy got spanked. So we, we brought Mez in on uh, Demon Hunter. We lost his double Demon Hunter. And we lost the tournament. We got second place. So third cup, you know, we're like, Mez, we're going to need you to make a warrior. We're going to have to play turbo, you know. And that was good enough to beat the RPS. And um, once again, it was a very small role for Mez to take. But he took it and he was he was happy for it. And, you know, he, he did his job. So going into BlizzCon, you know, we were the number one seed NA. And that, that momentum meant so much to us, you know. Um, it... It really felt like the BFA Cups, we were doing incredible. Um, 
We got first place, second place, first place. It's basically, it's almost as good as you can do. Um, and once again, you know, we when we got 7-0'd by the move, it didn't hurt our confidence. It made us work harder. And that's something that it's always easy to be, it's always easy to be a good team when you're on top. It's much harder to be a good team when you're not on top, you know, when you when you hit the speed bumps, you know, how do you get through those? And it's just it's something that we build our team on this year is being able to get through those tough times and being able to work through that. Um, so we got uh, we got through those online cups. And, you know, a lot of people were saying that we had a really hard bracket and a lot of people were saying that, you know, it was going to be incredibly difficult. First round, we fought making a movie, the number three team EU. Second round, we most likely fought uh, fought XRB, the number the number two team EU. And then, um, you know, third round, it was either going to be the move or it was going to be Method Black. And we knew that was going to be an incredibly difficult matchup. And I went into BlitzCon this year with a different mindset, a different attitude. I wasn't afraid of anyone because I knew we were the fucking team to beat. You know what I mean? I don't care how hard the road was. I don't care who was in our way. If we got to beat him first round, if we got to beat him in the finals, doesn't matter, doesn't matter where we're at. We, you know, I was going to be prepared for that tournament. And um, so obviously we were preparing first for RMP and we were wargaming against the best RMP we could find. We had Gex on Dispriest, we had Roasties on Rogue, and we had Rosita Jones and Jamili playing the mage part. And we were wargaming them quite a bit as DH Boomy. And it turns out, versus Gnome Priest, with Root Beam being irrelevant, I don't know if you guys know how Gnome works, but every one minute you could break a snare or a root, it's not on your trinket cooldown, it's got no GCD. If they, if they could get out of every single Root Beam, our win condition versus Rogue Mage vanished. It disappeared. Um, so Rogue Mage Priest was incredibly difficult for DH Boomy. So we had to come up with some other options. So we're wargaming, we're trying Turbo, we're trying all this other stuff, and we tried Death Knight. We tried DHDK. And it was surprisingly really good into Rogue Mage. And we were kind of confused, and we, we were messaging them after the games, and we're like, what was the hardest? And they're like, DHDK, without a doubt, was the hardest comp you guys play into us. And we're like, okay, we have zone, we have darkness, we have three ranged kicks, we have fucking mana burn. This is incredibly stable. This is what we want to play in a rogue mage. So we were kind of sleeping on Death Knight for a while, and we knew we were going to play it in that first series. So first series... Mez bust out the Death Knight, and in all the war games, we didn't we didn't train Priest. We knew that's what we wanted to do. We didn't train Priest. We would go Mage, we would go Rogue, but first game, it was fucking target acquired. We attacked that Priest, and um, we didn't need to win with damage. All we needed to do was live, win with mana. You know, Priests are on a very short timer without mana burn. Mana burn puts that fucking timer even shorter. Um, so once again, we just locked on. That Priest was dead Oom. And uh, we, we take game one. Uh, game two, they try and dampen us as Shadow Priest Mage. We were able to hold on to that one. It was a really close game. Mez probably dipped below 3% Botar level. Uh, and then game three, they tried Rogue Mage with a Shaman. And um, game three, I feel like I should pull up the VODs because I feel like this is going to be kind of cool to watch. So I'm only going to do this every once in a while. Uh, let me go to twitch.tv slash Warcraft. Um, so during game two, during game two, um, there was a point in the game where the mage was just out of mana a lot, a lot, a lot. Method black versus method orange. Hold on, we gotta find. Uh, making a movie versus reformed. Skokab versus Tempo Storm. Method orange. Method orange. So during game two, there was a point in the game where. The mage was oom um, a whole bunch. And I was like, oh my god, like, I wish we had mana break. So going into game three, knowing how much I can't actually do anything about um, my camera being in the way, for the most part, I could do this maybe. Um, knowing how much, uh, knowing how many stops we have, we went into game three and Trill was playing no reverse magic. You can see it here right, right on the UI. Reverse magic's not there. We're like, we'll stop all the CC. If I get polyed, we make a mistake. So once again, Trill dropped reverse magic for offense, and he played mana break. And right here, if you watch Morrow's HP, he gets in that low mana range, 
and Trill just fucking explodes him. So he dies without block, you know, obviously he had one available, but that was our game plan. He said, I'm going to play Mana Break, and we are going to kill this guy without block. Um, and uh, that, to me, was just an incredible feeling. I went to BlizzCon in 2014, and opening week, I went 0-3. Okay, I've been in that situation before that those guys were in, and it's really tough to be in. Um, the whole week, you got to figure out what went wrong. There's no more second chances, um, and to be in uh, to be in that position where we three owed one of the best RMPs out there, and I'll talk about how good they are in a moment, uh, or in a few moments. Um, it was really good. I think DHDK was an incredibly smart comp. Uh, I'm super happy that we had Mez on Death Knight. Mez on Death Knight is just our confidence levels at an all-time high. Uh, it's just, he's insane. So, we knew that we were going to be fighting XRB next. XRB uh, destroyed Tempo Storm. They 3-0'd them. So, um, after opening week, opening week was on Monday. On Tuesday, you transferred from Burbank to Anaheim. So, it was a free day. The the setup the uh, the event wasn't open for the players on Tuesday, it was a free day, um, and you know what we did on our free day. We went to the esports arena in Santa Ann. So while everyone else was taking their free day, we were wargaming Smexin, we were wargaming Inviable, and we were wargaming Corlick, a Turbo Cleave. We wargamed a Turbo Cleave for four to five hours nonstop. Figuring out what we could do to beat them, figuring out the best gear, um, figuring out everything we could to make sure that we were prepared for Turbo Cleave. Turns out DH Boomkin is incredibly good into Turbo Cleave, guys. Um, I don't know if you guys realize this, but XRB did not play Turbo into us. And maybe they could have took some games off us as Turbo. We war game Turbos, we war game Tempos Turbo. Uh, we would we won majority. We war gamed um, Method Black's Turbo. We won majority. Um, Every once in a while, you know, they could randomly give a kill or whatever. But DH Boomkin was really, really good in the turbo. So they decided not to play, play it into us at all. And, um, you know, while we're on the tournament realm, we're not stupid. We're typing Slash Shoe. We could see what they're playing. Um, you know, some players talk a little bit. And we, we heard rumors of Shadow Priest Fury. We heard rumors of uh, Fury Boomkin. We heard rumors of, you know, some DH in hand. We, we, we knew everything that they were that they were practicing. We weren't sure what they were going to open as, though. And uh, they opened up as Boomkin Fury. And let me tell you something. That first game was really close. That first game was really, really close. Um, but sitting in our back pocket was Double DH. We didn't have to play at this tournament, but if we lost a game versus XRB, Double DH was coming out. And um, I, Ven told me after the series, he said, I asked Looney how he felt about the series, you know, how he felt about the upcoming series. And Looney replied... I feel like I'm about to be Oom. I think they were pretty afraid of Double DH. We didn't actually have to play it, but it was sitting in the back pocket. So uh, we won the first game, and it was really close. They actually they, they forced all of our CDs multiple times, and what's crazy is after the game, Trill said, dude, what the fuck is Blizzo's damage? He destroyed us, uh, he destroyed us on damage. He's like... Trill, Trill does the most damage. He's like, I never get out damaged like this. Like, holy fuck, Blizzo fucking farms. Like, he was like, good lord. Um, the next game is DH Enhance. Um, 